Hey guys, thanks for joining me. We got ourselves a gigantic lake trout. We're gonna do catch and cook caveman style cooking on a rock using primitive stone tools. We're gonna process this guy down and we're gonna cook him lakeside in the wilderness, the deep Canadian wilderness. Join me. Hey guys, first of all, thanks for joining me on this epic adventure. I'd like to thank my sponsor of this video, War Robots. Without sponsors like this, these videos would not be possible and you guys would never see the action. War Robots is an action-packed, tactical multiplayer game with 6v6 team battles in real time. The main goal is to either destroy the enemy's team or capture the beacons in the battlefield. You'll need a good strategy to win. I learned that the hard way. Install War Robots now and get a huge starter pack of one bow robot plus unique skin for it. Robot is naturally durable, tons of HP. Full set of weapons, you get 100 gold and 400,000 silver. Create a war machine to fit your own playstyle. Rich 3D graphics, constant content updates. For example, in July, developers added two new weapons and brand new design for an old robot. Over 100 million players have already installed the game. Join me on the battlefield. Download the game with the link below and get your bonus and get going today. Now, let's get back into the fishing. So everything's really calmed down here. The lakes, um, we actually met some campers who were trading off on our plane at the landing and they were saying they were here for three days on this lake and they couldn't do very much fishing because it was way too windy. So even though we were delayed a little bit in coming in with, from the wind, it looks like things have improved a significant amount because those waves out there are completely different from how they were when we started. And I don't know if you guys have a lot of camping, canoeing experience, but when it gets windy, <clears throat> it's a hard time controlling the canoe, especially when you're going into the wind. You know, sometimes you can get away with going with the wind and getting a nice shove, but of course, then you have to paddle back. You can see behind me here, that's all burn on the other side there. All burn, all the way across, all burn. It's a forest fire from before, so we are being watchful. We have about seven, six or seven fires out here right now, currently. Um, most of them are to the north, at least the big ones. We flew over a couple to our east. Um, but yeah, you can see that whole side's all burnt. A natural rejuvenation process of, of the trees. That's um, basically it's like an 80 year cycle. Forest fire goes through, wipes everything out, leaves lots of nitrogen behind. That goes up primary growth. And then any of those um, seeds that are left Will, will germinate and that'll produce what you're seeing coming in next and uh, that's usually how you know how trees uh, how, how the woods go and uh, we try to mimic this a little bit now with our cutting practices clear cutting practices and now they're starting to clear cut right to the edge of the lake and the reason being because there's so much more primary growth near the lake edge and that promotes new life coming in for beaver you know, muskrat and all those little animals that like to use the edges of the lakes. Before they would keep a buffer, but it was more for aesthetic reasons. So people who came out to fish wouldn't be troubled by seeing a shoreline like that, devoid of any trees. But they've since learned and they've changed how they do things and now they're coming right to the shoreline. So you may start to see that if you're anywhere up in Northern Ontario, you'll see them coming right down to the edge of the lake. So what we're using for lures to catch these Lakers is just a spoon. This is a Williams, it's kind of Williams wobbler kind of deal. It's just a big spoon. And we're just flat line trolling them. So we let out, you know, as much line as you can bear. And that'll bring the lure down maybe 20 feet, maybe. And then just troll real slow. And the aggressive trout will just come up and smack it. So a pretty simple way to fish. You can also jig down deep like lake trout. It's an interesting fish because they actually live 80 feet deep in these lakes. Uh, but because there are so many of them, there's always some that are up higher. 
and that's why it's easy to catch them in a canoe or otherwise you'd need downriggers and a whole bunch of other really high-tech gear but because we're in the park and there's so many of them there's always one or two oddballs that are up nice and high and aggressive Jeremy said he wouldn't, he wouldn't sing. I don't know how you can be a voyageur without singing. Harlan asked us if we were going to sing. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to sing? Uh, I don't think so. Oh, come on. I'll clap after you sing. <laughs> That'll be my contribution. You just have to repeat the certain wines. So, um, we are both French, as I said, so goes something like you can sing along at home if you want Alouette gentil Alouette Alouette gentil plumeré gentil plumeré la tête gentil plumeré la tête gentil plumeré la tête Alouette this is like the wheels on the bus go round and round. It never ends. You just name a different body part and you just keep going. I think it's to motivate you to paddle your way to your destination. So you can either sing the wheels on the bus or alouette. We have this lake to ourselves. We what? We have this lake to ourselves. Yep. The whole lake. The whole lake. Just There's. Us and the lake trout. 500 people that visit Woodland Caribou and Harlan puts in 400 of them. Is that what he said? Yeah, that was his estimate. He puts in 400 people. He puts in most 80%. 80% of the people that go to Woodland, he puts in. So he knows what he's talking about. We're trying to catch one more lake trout each, maybe. Maybe something for breakfast. I'll be all right. So the best way to fish in a canoe is you lock the rod in with your legs. The rod holder's nice, but you don't feel the bite. So watch, down there. We've got it locked on one uh, back of the calf, and the other one on the shin, and you'll feel the bite here. And that works and then you paddle on the same side as you have your rod and then you won't get tangled up and if the guy in the back does the same thing paddle on the same side the paddle goes inside that right angle made by the line and the rod and that works really well for trolling for anything so we are going to be up high in the water column trolling like this that's okay, like I said, there's gonna be a lot of fish. And we only need a couple to come up and grab it. And Jeremy just missed bite. So, we should be on the right track here. And Jerry's got a fish on. Can you reach the net or no? No, I just need you to pass me the handle. Uh. Thanks. Alright, so if Jared can land this, he won't be skunked. So far he's skunked, so there's lots of pressure on him. <laughs> <laughs> so far, we've been here a couple hours. Oh, it's getting feisty. Like, I don't want to go up to the top. Laker. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. oh. There, there it is. Go. Here's not skunked. 
unless it falls out of the boat. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. So your question is, what are you going to do with that guy? Are you going to keep it? Yeah, you want to keep one and then just uh, do a little bit more fishing and see how we do? Yeah, we can let the rest of them go. I don't think we're going to eat one bigger than that today no. again. I also, I wouldn't mind to let this guy go. We could do that. It's the one Thompson. All the fish, all the time. Delphine bought that lure expecting it to catch me. All the fish, all the time. And, oh, there. Nice lake trout, first one of this trip. We'll let this guy go. Eat them? Well, it's up to it's your call. Well, that's a good eating size fish, eh? It is a good eater. I mean, we'll keep we can just guy. let the rest of the other ones go. Sure. If Sounds you want, good. If you want to eat another one. Yeah. That's a not a bad size one. No, that's perfect. It's a perfect right. eater. We'll uh, whack it on the head then. Yep. We need a fish whacker. Yeah. Use a paddle. Yeah. All right, no sudden movements. <laughs> I'm gonna hit my thumb, that's what's gonna happen. <laughs> All right, I'm ready. That's it, we can call it a trip. Let's go get a walleye lake now. <laughs> <laughs> this is too easy. I want to go home. So we were fishing probably for 20 minutes, if I'm being fair. Probably. Maybe less. So in total, we've been 25 minutes, two fish. And we're probably not really doing it properly because we don't know this lake. We don't really know what we're doing for lakers from a canoe. This is all kind of weird stuff, so. I'm sure other people could do better than us. But uh, if we can do this and you can, and if you're a good fisher, you can do better than that. All right, let's catch another one. Yeah. So all that, there is all smoke from the forest fire. It's got that orangey hue. That's a forest fire. You can see it's not over on this side. And it's not behind us over here at all. So there's definitely a fire over that direction. I can't smell it though. Can you smell it? No. No. It's pretty far off. Well, there are, uh, there are at least nine fires burning in the park right now that started all within the last 48 hours. Yeah. Some of them will be growing and... I don't know. I didn't, they seem to be growing when we looked at the last update for the status, so... Yeah. Fire, forest fires are a common thing in here. See, just the shoreline's all, all burnt out. Kind of let them run their course. Bird. Jeremy this time caught a delicious trout. Nice lake trout. We're in Woodland Caribou Provincial Park. We've been outfitted by Red Lake Outfitters. And I have myself a stone knife. And I've always been interested to test these out. But YouTube's a little bit sketchy on what, how you can use knives and what you can use them for. But uh, I can't use this on a mammal. Um, at least show it, but I can show it on a fish. So we are going to test out these stone tools on this delicious trout. And then we're going to cook it on a rock. We're going to do some caveman cooking. Now, I got to explain the uniform I'm wearing, but I did a fuller explanation on an earlier video, so you should go back and check that out. 
but we are coureurs de bois, we are voyageurs, we are traveling back in time. And throughout our travels back in time, part of the things that we're doing is going back even further than the 1650s, 1750s, as according to the uniform I'm wearing. It's not a costume, it's a uniform, it's what people wore at the time. So I'm going back even further to caveman times. So we've been doing this on the channel frequently where we cover topics and cooking and scavenging and hunting and fishing in ways that primitive people did. So without going on too extensively, let's try this knife on this fish and let's see just how well it performs. And let's get this thing cooking on a rock. Dude, what a crazy, crazy awesome evening. What started off as Something that could have been just forest fire, light in park and high winds is like, look at that sunset. So calm and quiet out here. Uh, Jeremy's One Wild Crafter, check out One Wild Crafter. He's got a YouTube channel. Check him out. He's uh, getting the fire going. Yep. There's a huge rock slab. And the idea is we're going to make a gigantic fire so big that it heats up that rock and then we can throw the trout on top of here and bake it caveman style. I wish we could take credit for the construction of this fire thing but we can't. But we can make use of it. So we got a blazing hot fire going now. But the problem, which is probably obvious to anybody who's cooked on a rock before, which is like everybody, everybody cooks on a rock, right? But this back rock here is getting warm. And it's getting hot plate warm, but not oven warm. It's getting pretty close. So we've made up a backup plan. And if that doesn't work, we are going to use We'll use these front stones here. We'll drag coals out here and then we'll drop a flat rock in front, a thinner flat rock, because that's a thick flat rock, flat rock, which will take a lot of heat to heat up. It'll eventually get there, but we are running out of daylight and we prefer to cook it while we can still see what's going on. So we've got a couple of stone tools. Uh, these are made by Jay Valenti. You guys have been really um, asking and interested about these for a long time and people ask who made them it's Jay Valenti he has a YouTube channel called Vision Quest Outdoors is that right yep yeah Vision Quest Outdoors mm -hmm. link will be on down on the bottom or whatever you'll find it but uh, you should contact him because he makes these and sell, sells these and they're not super expensive I think the last one he sold was a small knife but he sold it for 60 bucks I think the most you pay is like 250 200 bucks or something like that yeah like for the amount of craftsmanship that goes into these, it's uh, it's really worth your money. And he wants you to use them. Yeah. He didn't say, he, he didn't say like put it on a mantle and admire it. He says, use them. They're yeah. made for use. Yeah, and if you want to see what he's got, just go to his um, Etsy store. Yeah. Which is also Vision Quest Outdoors. So yeah. it's easy to find. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're made for use. So we are going to use them. Yep. <laughs> He's been, he said, you got to do it on an animal. And I said, well, I can't do it on an animal, but I can do it on a fish. So we will show you what this can do. So 
I've already done it on raw meat and I know it works really well. So we're gonna, we're gonna let's get a close up shot to see exactly what these stone tools can do. All right, so we got a wooden handle one. I don't know what kind of stone these are used or made from. Well, this from. one's obsidian. Obsidian? That's a, some kind of a chert, I think. Yeah. And Jay will drop a comment if we get that <laughs> wrong. Yeah. And you can He'll correct us. figure out what kind of knife you want to use. He really wanted me to use this one. He called it green, but I don't know if that's green or not. Does that look green to you? It's the green stone chert, I think. <laughs> is it what it is? It's um, maybe what I had on the arrows that I was shooting that I had from him. Right. So that, and that's, a, is that a glass one, that one? It's obsidian. Obsidian. Is that like a kind of glassy? It's a like volcanic it's rock. Right. More shiny. Okay. So we're yeah. going to do probably one cut on this side and see what happens. Oh, it's cutting. It needs a little bit more pressure than I thought. There we go. Just getting through the skin was a little tricky. So once, once I'm through, that's that cuts really well. Yep. And maybe we'll try the other. This I know is super, super, super duper sharp. But again, it's having some issues getting through the skin. But once it's through the skin, it, it's like butter. That does a really nice job. So seeing as how I'm not going through any skin at all. I'm not going through any skin at all on this side here. It should have no problem at all. Like a zipper. And oh look at that, all our treasures are inside. Yep. So yeah, what else we got? It's got eggs. Looks like I've gone through the intestine, so we'll peel yeah. that away. We don't want that in the meat. No. Nope. I can work backwards here and butterfly that all the way back. So there you go, stone tools do the job. Put that little cord there by my finger. Yep. Thank you. There you go. That was just holding all the eggs in place. I don't know if you could fillet one, but are you eating those raw? Maybe. <laughs> want some? Uh, not raw. I don't think I do want them raw, but just all right. So how do we want to? How do you want to cut this? Do you want to go through the rib cage and butterfly it? Um. Or do we want to just slab it and turn it? It's a big piece of meat. Yeah, I don't know. I think if you butterfly it, that's probably the way to go, eh? Yeah, most likely. All right, we'll see what it can do on the ribs here. Yeah, because they're pretty tough. You want to use the heavier knife? No, you're just going to go right through. Just right through. So just because they're primitive people does not mean they were disadvantaged. <laughs> He's... These are sharp, sharp knives. Mm -hmm. Well, you satisfied with that? Yeah. That's a turn flying overhead if you're wondering what that bizarre noise is. So quiet out here. Mm -hmm. There's no city noise, no city hum. No, as soon as the wind drops, you really get a sense for how quiet it is. All right, think about that. Is your mouth watering? It's getting there. <laughs> Okay, so there we have our butterfly trout, more or less. Just needs a little wash. Yeah, that's awesome. Good job, Jay Valenti. Tools that work. So there you go, there's two knives that I'm super impressed with, these stone tools. And there's 
a butterflied trout that needs a little bit of wash up but it's going to go on that stone fire and hopefully we're going to be able to cook it stone fire wood fire on stone stone cooked all right let's wash this guy up throw him on the flame Here it comes. There you go, big guy. How's that good stuff, buddy? Think he gets to eat my big fish? <laughs> no! Oh! It's a dinosaur. Look at that thing. Oh, he doesn't want to come out of the water though. <laughs> I'm sure he stole many people a fish. How you, buddy? <laughs> See you later, buddy. hard to describe just how quiet it is here like besides a couple birds tweeting if you just stand really still oh Jeremy's doing the water over here but just really still Your ears almost just ring <laughs> from me being so quiet. It's ridiculously peaceful here. Jeremy just froze. <laughs> we we'll do the tambourines. <laughs> the spoons. <laughs> and there's no mosquitoes on this island at all. Nothing. It's crazy. Well, we. We fed one of the Rosacks to the turtle. 
Um, so this leftover one, I just threw it in a pan with hot butter and I'm going to fry it up. So you can see the ones that have cooked have turned white and the ones that are not cooked are still yellowish and they just taste like mini scrambled eggs. Yeah, they do. They taste like chicken eggs. Yeah, and even raw, they just taste great. They're like... Chewier though, I find. Yeah, I found them actually kind of watery. Like each one kind of explodes in a... And they're not super yolky because I don't like egg yolks, but these guys are good. They're like salty water sort of. Normal people probably throw them out, right? Yeah, not too many people eat the trout roe. I don't think so. Trout stomach. We've eaten swim bladder. Yeah. We've eaten the guts. Yep. We've eaten the head, the eyeball, the brain. Yep. And the skin, of course. Yeah. We eat the whole thing. Yep. Might as well. It's all there for the eating. Rock coming in. All right. Hot rock. It's like one of those fancy restaurants where you get something in a hot skillet, or <laughs> we might have to lift that up a touch so you guys can see what cooking on a hot rock looks like. Yeah, that's pretty. It's like you're sizzling. What is it? Does it come in there? The nacho or the yeah, burritos? Know. Oh, oh yeah. It's all the presentation. There you go. Look at that. My gloves made it. Whew, that's a hot rock, man. For real. So? Well, we needed some call fat, obviously, to wrap it in. Because <laughs> it's stuck to the rock. Yeah. I guess cavemen put up with that. Crispy. It's before they had sticks to do, uh, well, we're gonna do that too, right? With sticks? Yeah. Smoke yeah. some? So you have to keep watching for that. Caveman style. No spices, no nothing. The flavoring comes from the rock. <laughs> the lichen. <laughs> the lichen. You didn't even cook it on the bald side. <laughs> cooked it on the lichen side. I guess so. So this is trout number two. We fished for, I don't know, half hours? hours? Oh, before we caught it? Before we caught this and then we fished for another I don't know. I don't think it was another hour, was it? I think it might have been. Yeah. So we're on Wrist Lake in Woodland Caribou Provincial Park. We were, we got flown in for three Red Lake Outfitters. And it's Wrist Lake, like your wrist. Yeah. We're doing um, not a loop. It's a straight line. We're going north up here. We're hopping lakes back. So we'll be in another lake trout lake tomorrow and we can skip off to uh, another lake um, that's nearby so we're, do we're doing two nights there we're only doing one night here and then we're moving on uh, yeah oh it's good here man it's quiet mm -hmm. so quiet mm -hmm. it's not bad for having nothing on it oh, there's nothing wrong with that could use some spices. Yeah, some butter. But this is caveman. Caveman means nothing on it. Caveman weren't fancy. I think they learned a few spices, but we haven't figured that out yet. They might have. Or caveman, like early caveman, caveman. I like him. <laughs> the eggs were good. I have a few, is that, is that the eggs there? No, that's wild rice. Our leftover wild rice from this afternoon. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, you guys asked for Jeremy to come back, so that's the only reason I invited mm -hmm. him on this trip. Yep. Because you guys, so thanks, wanted, guys. You guys wanted him back. And Jeremy's going to be releasing some things on his channel too, so you guys should go check him out. There'll be a link there. We have this whole lake to ourselves. Crazy. 
and the next lake. Yeah. And the lake next to that one. And about three lakes that way. It's all ours. I want to see a caribou towards Jamie. Huh. I'd like to see a bear and a moose. Mm -hmm. We can't eat any of them, but we can see them all we want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We saw a really cool snapping turtle. That was neat. You ever seen a snapping turtle behave like that? You can no. hand, hand feed a snapping turtle. I've heard of some doing that, but I've never seen it. That turtle was not afraid of people at all. No. I mean, when I, if I moved, I had to move really, really fast in order to spook it. Yeah. You just dangle it in front and it would come right up. And That turtle's probably at least 50 years old. Yeah. He might have been eating fish <laughs> here <laughs> from people for the whole, his whole life. Right? That's amazing. That'd be crazy. Yeah. Yeah, bizarre. And, noth and nothing, you could tell like nothing It really bothered it. It was like looking at you like, oh, you're all right. Yeah. It's like probably the first time he's ever been hand fed by a voyageur or a, or a coureur de bois. Yeah. There is the distinction there. You got to look it up. Big difference. All right, we're going to finish this up. And we're going to check the sunset. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow morning we're packing. And we're portaging. No, tomorrow's a work day. Yeah, unfortunately. Until we get there. But you guys can, uh, you can subscribe or not, I don't care. If you guys enjoyed um, the variety of cooking that we're doing and we'd like to do some caveman fishing and that would be neat, do some spearing and some netting and, but not legal. So we had to use a rod and line. All right, we're gonna dig into this. We're gonna finish off our wild rice from earlier. And I'm gonna hurt it early bedtime so that we can get up bright and early and do it all over again. Mm -hmm. Cheers, guys. <laughs>